Now we're going to get into the draw shot. And it's probably my favorite shot and a lot of other players as well. It's incredibly fun and it's incredibly useful in all the games, especially when you can start to draw with incredible speed control and get the cue ball just where you want it. It's a very satisfying and useful shot. So the idea behind it is you want backspin on the cue ball at the moment of impact. And we'll use the stripes here so we can see the spin. So as long as that ball has spin at the moment of impact, you're going to get some backspin. So here's center. So it'll go below center. And there we came back. Now you can control that with incredible accuracy. And the basic idea is the lower you go on the cue ball, the more spin you're going to have. The thing is, you have to have that spin on the cue ball when it makes contact in order to get the amount of draw that you want. So you can't just hit it low and expect the ball to still have spin on it over the course of a table distance. You have to hit it with the right speed as well. And what you're going to want to do is basically, there's a certain snap in your stroke. And really all that is, is an accelerating motion. So you can't have what, what I'll call like a flat stroke. So here we go. I'm just going to hit it low. Okay, I got a stop out of it, but it didn't come back. And what I would need is more of an acceleration as we went through all the throwing motions in the other sports. So I'm just going to put a little bit more acceleration here. See, and we get some backspin. And I didn't really hit it that hard. It's just more of a acceleration. So it's not going to be an even speed follow through. You can start out slow but then pick up speed and come right through the cue ball and you'll get a good draw. You're really going to have to work on it. Once you hit that point where you start drawing, you're going to get so much fun out of the game. It's like a quantum leap. You might practice for hours or days and not be able to draw the ball. But then finally once you start doing it, it's just going to click in for you. So the first thing to start doing is set up a ball straight in the side, make the ball and try to bring the cue ball back into the side pocket. Okay. Let's talk about the stroke a little bit. There's a couple different ways to do it. Remember there's a basic stroke that we talked about before where you're only really moving your forearm in a pendulum motion. So see that how I don't really drop my elbow and the tip goes down pretty quick and then it stops right here. Now, as long as you have kind of a short range shot where there's not much distance there or you don't want to draw it too far that's actually pretty effective as long as you're hitting it below center and it's not so much about a level stroke the main thing is about hitting it below center and following through and definitely having chalk is incredibly important you need that to create the friction but here I'm just going to keep my elbow generally where it is see that And you, you can vary how much you're going to draw it based on how low you go again. But you're not going to have a very long follow through. Okay, the other way to do it would be the drop elbow stroke. And I believe we went over that before, but here's how it looks different. See how my elbow drops down and my hand keeps pushing forward. My stroke is much longer when I do that. So here's without dropping the elbow. And then with dropping the elbow, stroke goes way out there. So what you can do is get a draw that's a lot smoother. It takes a lot less effort when you drop your elbow like that. You want to be careful not to drop your hand is the thing because that is one of the biggest uh, problems that people have when they're trying to draw. If they're having problems with their draw that I've noticed, is if you drop your hand 
right here, what happens is the tip goes up. So I'll see people lining up for the bottom of the ball, but then on their last stroke, they'll drop their backhand and end up hitting the ball in the middle. And they'll only get a stop shot. And they keep wondering, why, why, why can't I draw the ball? And well, the, the simple answer is, they're just not putting any backspin on it. They couldn't see that. So you need to have somebody look at your stroke. Or you can do it now just by thinking about it. So watch my right hand and see how it doesn't really drop so much, even though my elbow does. Okay. See how my hand is up like this? So you, you want to think of it as controlling your grip hand in your stroke. If you just control your hand, your elbow is automatically going to drop. So think about pushing your hand through and lifting it up slightly. And it helps to have a nice closed hand bridge. That's what's going to make the cue bend because you're lifting up on the cue. And the cue is pushing forward. And it's your finger here that's going to make the cue bend because you're pulling up a little bit here. All this helps keep your cue on the line, a nice line going straight through the bottom of the cue ball like that. And then you're going to scrape the table for like six inches or so after you hit the cue ball. So you hit the cue ball and you go through it, you hit the table and then you keep on going like that. Okay, one thing I've noticed players having a hard time with with their draw is just not pulling back far enough on their backswing. And it becomes hard to get acceleration if you don't pull back far enough. So I'm going to just pull back a couple inches right here. Okay, now I gave it a decent stroke, the best I could with that amount of follow through. But let's see what happens when I pull back a lot further in my backswing. See if I can get a better draw out of that. Okay, it's basically the same speed of stroke that I had in the last or in the first shot, but this time I was able to I pulled back further, so I was able to generate more speed by the time I was hitting and going through the cue ball than if I only pulled back a little bit from the cue ball. Another thing I see players having a hard time with is not following through. I'll show you from the side first. So, they'll aim low and then they'll just stop or either at the cue ball or just past the cue ball and they don't get the draw that they want. So let's see what happens if I do that with this shot. So I did get some draw, but I could feel myself checking up on that stroke. Felt pretty weird actually not to follow through. Now I'm just going to do the same speed with a, more of a follow through. You see that? And the ball just comes back more. If you're tensing your muscles at the moment of impact, somehow you're just not going to get that good of a hit. Uh, and it's, it's a big strain try and do that. The whole point here is that you want to have a nice, long, smooth follow through in your draw. And another thing is a lot of players, they're just not hitting the ball low enough. Remember though, further away from the center, you hit the cue ball, whether it's on the right or left or top or bottom, the more spin you're going to get, the more rotation. So if you're only hitting it a little bit below center, you're not going to have that much draw. Here's center, I'll just hit a little bit below. Now with that same speed, but hitting it way below center, I get a much longer draw. So that's going to help your draw right away, just by hitting it lower. Now once you start doing that though for the first time, there's a high probability you're going to start jumping the cue ball off the table. Huh? 
I tried to jump it, but okay, let me try again. So I'm gonna right. So just be careful if you're at a pool hall. You don't want to break a window. Or you don't want to hurt anybody uh, because there's a good chance you're gonna do that at least a couple times. So it's really just a matter of developing that feel on how to hit it really low and still not jump it. And part of it is coming through on a nice plane like that. Imagine it's like an airplane coming in for a landing instead of a crash landing like that. You don't want to just scoop, hit the bottom of the ball. At the last second you don't want to just hit the very bottom or hit the table before the cue ball. So you want to be smooth in your follow through. And that just comes a lot with practice, being able to hit the bottom and follow through. Of course, if you if you get your hand down close to the table, then you'll be less likely to scoop on your draw. So that'll look here's say this is a, a higher bridge. If I get my hand kind of squish my hand down. Now I'm hitting the, t the table, going through the ball at a different angle. Compare that to being way up here and hitting the cue ball low. The tip is going into the table very quickly, so I have to time it impeccably to hit that ball low before I hit the table. But when you're down here, it seems that you're able to get a nice clean hit on the cue ball a little bit easier. Practice that. Alright, now it is possible to achieve a draw shot with an open hand bridge. You might find that it's more solid and stable with the closed hand bridge, and that's what I usually use on my draw shots. But if you're having a hard time creating a good closed hand bridge, then go ahead and do the draw shot with the open hand bridge. So for me, it looks like this. And you see how the cue came off my hand and went up a little bit. And earlier I was talking about one of the mistakes is hitting the cue ball too low or not low enough and the stick flying up in the air. Uh, what I was referring to was dropping the hand causing the stick to come up that way. But if you'll notice I hit this one, I kept control of my hand as I went through the cue ball and that's what you want to do when you're drawing with an open hand bridge. So you see my right hand? I didn't drop it. In fact, it's just about the same as if I was doing a draw shot with a closed hand bridge. It's just I don't want the cue to flop around. So I retain control over it after I hit the ball and follow through. Then that's when I just lift it up barely with my hand automatically. And for short range shots, also, and we're going to get into a drill, I may as well show you now. This is a great drill for practicing your short range draw shot and you want to become really accurate with your speed and direction control. You start out with three balls right in front of the side in a slight arc. And then you just draw the cue ball back and keep a slight angle on the next ball so you can draw back for the third ball as well. I like to use an open hand bridge with this. See how soft I hit it and there's not a lot of follow through? That's what I'm talking about with not needing to follow through too much when you're doing short range draw shots and you don't need to drop your elbow like that. So just watch how the cue stick comes through the cue ball. It's just touch at that point. And you can start at three and then graduate to four, five, six, seven, eight, nine is really good. And then when you're feeling ambitious, go ahead and do all 15 balls in an arc and uh, You'll be hitting that drill really well there. Another common fault I see when people are drawing the cue ball or trying to draw it is they'll hit the cue ball and then quickly pull back with their cue thinking that that is going to make the cue ball come back, pulling their stick back. And it will look maybe like this, something like that. And in the process they might not even hit the ball low and they won't get a draw. Um, so if you're a beginner then you want to avoid that. It, 
it's not pulling back your cue, it's going to create the draw shot. It's the actual follow through. So I'll set it up at a slight angle just so you can see again the follow through. Right? That's what you want to do. Now, you will want to pull back the cue. If the cue ball is coming straight back, you'll need to get the cue out of the way. So that's the only time you're going to really pull back. Okay, but I did follow through. It was after I followed through that I pulled back. Or you could do something that actually Danny Harriman, another professional, taught me. And that just has to do with pulling your, turning your cue over to the side after you follow through. It'll look something like this. See that? So there was a nice delivery and then just get out of the way like that. It's a good tip from Danny. Alright, on draw shots, I also see people kind of freak out on their backswing. They'll pull back really fast before they hit it. And it actually applies to all shots. You don't need to pull back super fast. You can't come back kind of quick though. It's, uh, it's really a matter of style and opinion on the backswing. But you definitely don't want to take it to the extreme and, and just freak out and pull back way too fast, causing everything to, to go out of whack. Uh, so, no matter what the speed of your backswing is, I'd recommend try slowing it down and even stopping at the end of your backswing. So, slow back, stop, and then come through. Uh, that can help you out on a lot of your shots, all your shots really. Work on a, a slow backswing. Myself, I might have a little bit quicker of a backswing when I normally play than some players, but I like the slow backswing and I use that sometimes as well. Uh, so, really work on it. It's going to help you out even as a drill because it's at the end of your backswing where your forward swing starts, as we've talked about in the stroke section. So there's really no hurry to get back to the end of your backswing. And it helps you lock in up here. I remember somewhere I read Buddy Hall was talking about why he pauses at the end of his backswing. And he says it was because so he could lock his eyes in on the contact point of the object ball. So we'll get into that more in the uh, eye pattern section. And uh, try it with your draw shot. Now slow down your backswing and follow through. This is the granddaddy of all the drills, especially draw shot drills. It's my favorite of any of the drills for any shot. And there's no hiding here, there's no fudging. It's about developing your speed control. And you're also going to develop your stroke and being able to hit center ball as well. It's kind of like the long straight in shot, which you want to do also for the draw shot. This one though is going to give you that skill, that world class skill that you're working on building. And this is how I develop my speed control on the draw shots. And what you do is you start out, you could start out like this cue ball by the side pocket, the object ball by the diamond. And that could change. You could change it in your next version of the drill, but you're going to keep it like this for a while. So the first shot is to draw back to be even with this diamond and straight on the line. So it's your speed control. If you're off over here and on that line, that's good but it's not great, it's not perfect, but the speed control is good, so you can pat yourself on the back there. You want to be correct on your speed and on your direction, so if you have one of those right, at least that's good. Um, but you do this until you land straight back and perfectly even with that diamond, and it doesn't matter if it takes one, two, three, four, five racks of balls until you get that, that's what you do. So when you get that, then you can move on to the next diamond, right out here, right in line with your stroking line, and so on. Side pocket, this diamond, this diamond, this diamond, and then all the way back to the rail. And I actually like to keep on going. I'll play it off the rail, and then out to here, to this diamond, and then off the rail, and out to here, to this diamond, and so on. Like that, especially as you add more power to your stroke, you want to combine that by adding speed control. So I look at these as like a bucket of balls when you're playing golf. You know, Tiger Woods talks about how he got so good is by hitting just countless buckets of balls. And that's what you got to do in pools. Just consider this a bucket of balls and you just hit countless numbers of these. If you have a ball return table, 
then it makes it easy. You don't have to go down there and take the balls out of the pocket. But it's amazing the results you're going to get from this drill. And you can also work on your stance and stroke as you do it. So I'll go for that first diamond. Alright, came back on a pretty good line, but almost all the way back to the second diamond. And you're going to learn the table that you're playing on as well. How fast is it? What kind of stroke you need? You're just going to learn the speed that it requires. I'm barely touching that ball to get it back. It's almost right back there. It's off by like two inches. Uh, really be hard on yourself here. So, because you're really wanting to develop a skill. So, be as perfectionist as you can be in this drill. And there's no limits to how good you can become. So, the next one would be the long straight in, which we did with the stop shot. You know, this is the granddaddy of all the drills, really, because you're working on your stroke. Um, but it's more of a stroke drill. But for the long straight in, now you're just you're letting your stroke go on your jaw and you're trying to bring it back perfectly straight with no left or right spin and you're trying to make that ball perfectly into the pocket which if you do the ball is going to come back straight anyway so you just want to do this over and over and make sure you stay down so you can watch what happened so you can see I hit that one slightly up to the right, I made the ball uh, of course, I'm not going to be happy with that 100%. And you just you hit countless buckets of balls here, too. Okay, so try to figure out what you did. Okay, that's a lot better. You came back. And if your elbow is coming out, you'll feel that. So pay attention to keeping your elbow in line, watching your stroke go straight out. Work on that and the best of draw to you.